Check it out, guys. We've got the E-Flight Turbo Timber Evolution UMX. This thing is super cool. Horizon Hobby sent it to us in what's gonna be hopefully an awesome video here. Uh, it's a little windy out here at the park. Uh, I wanna go ahead and tell you guys up right up front, we're gonna be flying this on two cell Spectrum 300 milliamp packs, and we're gonna be flying it on three cell Spectrum 300 milliamp packs. We also have a little adapter that you're gonna probably need if you have some of the older packs that only use this style of connection that can allow you to connect into the JST plug that the timber uses. You can see it in here inside the plane. This thing, quick overview on it, super cool. Much more improved over the original version. It's capable of running three cells now. You can see it on the motor. Uh, it's much thicker looking. It's actually much more well built, much more robust than it was before. The plane is covered in water slide decals as we rotate it in the sun here. You're gonna notice there's no, uh, you'll be able to see the, the fact that it's water slide because it's kind of matte finished that matches the, uh, or closely matches the surface <coughs> of the foam. Overall, it uses ball links instead of those weird little plier links that it used to use before. You can kind of see them here on the elevator and on the wing. And the flaps are internal, of course, so you can't see that on there. Um, otherwise, the plane is basically a brand new refresh of the original Turbo Timber Evolution, which is also a refresh of the Turbo Timber UMX. This has always been one of my favorite little planes to putz around with. Uh, it is slightly windy and it is trying to fly out of my hands right now. So we're gonna go ahead and cut right to it with some flying and then we'll talk about it and what to expect. Let's go ahead and do some rough field offs with it. We're gonna take off from standing over here. My wife's over there on the side and the shadows, trying to keep warm in this chilly NC day. Get the flaps dropped, turn the voice up a little bit. Battery 11.9 volts. Okay, caught on a little piece of grass. That happens sometimes. There we go. Perfect. It is a small plane, so it is gonna take a little bit of work to get it to fly off of rougher grass that's like bigger than the plane is in some ways. Got a lot of people out here at the park that we're flying with. We're gonna to try to stop, you know, not be in their way. 20 seconds. This thing is flying great though. Full roll. Thing handles like really well in this wind. The forecast for today for today called for less wind than this, but as always, when I want to fly it gets crazy. Handles knife edge pretty well. There's a ton of rudder authority. We are flying on a Spectrum 300 milliamp three cell pack. Flaps full. Super cool little plane. It'll fly very slow, even with the uh, three cell pack in it. We do have two cell packs we're gonna show off too. We're gonna put the slats on after a couple of flights. And then we'll show you guys how it handles the slats as well. And then we're gonna put the floats on, take it down the street to the lake by my house. And we're gonna fly it off of that lake too which should shelter it from some of these winds that we're flying in. Handles very well in this turbulence. I don't really feel worried about it at all. Let's go ahead and take it up. One minute. Do a quick hammerhead. Tons of rudder authority, much more than it had before. I don't remember it being this responsive. Snap Let's put it into a, a hover if we can. Battery 11.1 volts. Oh, it's trying to ride the wind currents a little bit, so it might be tough. It is hoverable, but I think it's too windy right now to really do justice to it in that way. Let's do a quick full stop landing, take a look at it to see how it handles on the grass. Oh, get away from my wife, I don't want to hit her with the plane even if it would just bounce off of her. Roll over here, like it just, it glides even on this three cell pack. So if you guys are worried about it being affected by stall performance, like your stall performance is not going to be affected by it at all. Let's go ahead and uh, check our voltage. Volts. Still plenty of voltage left. Let's just hand toss it. You don't even really need the flaps in this wind. <laughs> Super easy. So cute. I bet it'll flat spin. We're gonna go up a little higher, okay, dear? Yeah, yeah. We have the battery shoved as far back as it'll go on this pack. Let's see if it'll flat spin. A little bit. I don't think it has enough tail authority with a three cell pack to really pull that off, but it still is cool. Let's drop the flaps, bring it in a little closer. Trying to get it to fly as slow as I can get it to go without the wind catching it too much, but it's such a lightweight airframe, even with this pack, that it'll basically go where the wind tells it to go. So you do have to fight that a little bit. The AS3X system does a great job of keeping it stabilized. Absolutely no problem with that at all. I know some of you guys looking at this, they're gonna be like, oh my God, not yet another timber, right? I love timbers. Those of you guys who've been watching my channel a long time know that like I like to do all sorts of cool stuff with timbers. UMX timbers I haven't flown in a while. My last one I did too many mods to it and it augured into the back of my neighbor's Tesla 
of course it just bounced off and did no damage to the car but it did damage the uh the plane irreparably i gave the parts to my drone pilot and he uh he rebuilt it but overall this plane handles very well um, for what it is it's really super cool you can fly this almost anywhere that you have any place to fly from uh, you guys do say yeah another timber blah 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 but you know what timbers are probably one of the better selling planes out there and i can see why horizon would keep making them because i love them i want them to keep making all sorts of different versions if they can i want to see what other timbers they can come out with personally i love these things winds are starting to really gust but you can see that it's handling it just fine there's a little bit of wind shear so the plane's getting caught and jostled around if i just hands off the sticks you can see it getting kind of pushed around by the the wind currents a little bit doing its best to fly it it's not half bad at all I am reticent to fly it with a two cell pack. I think that will be interesting. One of the biggest things I want to mention to you guys uh, in terms of what to expect performance wise, these uh, three cell packs are probably going to be where it's at for the most people. Flight pack 10.6. Um, like you're going to get the most performance out of it. Most people are probably going to fly it like that. But I think if you really want to make this thing fly like a feather in even like light or no wind at all, what you're going to probably want to do is use the two cell pack. You just won't be able to hover it as easily. Not that I was able to do much hovering with it in this wind. It's just getting blown around like crazy. Let's try hovering real quick again. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sketch. There we go. Needs a lot of back elevator, but it is hovering. There we go. Got a full torque roll out of it. I used to never be able to do this, so it's just kind of cool to, like, you know, if you go back and look at my older vids where I kind of was afraid of doing that, you know, I've, it's definitely, like, the more you practice getting yourself out of your comfort zone, the better off you're going to get. You having a good time over there, dear? Keeping up with it? It's cold. I'm sure it's cold, yeah. <laughs> I'm cold, too, but I don't have any gloves, so, you know, you got my gloves. You can have the other ones. Nah, that's all right. Anyway, yeah, um, I think we're going to land it real quick. We're going to take it off with a two-cell pack, give you guys some ideas of what it can do. What's our flight time so far? I'm, I'm loath to look down, but I'm gonna, because I need to, actually, I can't look. Uh, Battery 11.2 I just killed the on-screen telemetry. Just toss it in the safe, put the screen back on. There we go. That way you can see the on-screen telemetry again. Um, I'm pretty sure we've gotten at least four minutes of flight out of this. I'm sure there's plenty of power left to do, continue like flying here. Not even a problem. It is really getting its butt kicked by that wind, but it's so light, it just doesn't care. Let's do some inverted performance. Okay, I had to give it full stick up. That is an issue. Uh, you may have to increase the throws to get it to fly better on a three cell pack. I think it'll be better on a two cell pack. You can get the CG further back. Uh, but and on a uh, three cell pack, it definitely was very nose heavy and very hard to get it to stay inverted in this wind. I'm sure if it was a smoother day, it probably wouldn't be as much of a problem. Those of you guys are looking for a plane, this one's a really good solid price. It's like, I think it's only like $10 more than the original umx so it's like 160 instead of 150 it's got all the nice ball linkages that the umx timber x came with that kind of set a new standard for umx design uh it's very robust i love the water slides on it they look super cool let's bring it in um kind of call it quits on this battery pack and then switch to another one and it just floats forever doesn't it oh come on baby I may have to actually slip it with some rudder to get it to drop some airspeed on me okay let's let's try that Hold a crab angle. There we go. That's slowing it down. Plop. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's come right back with a two cell pack. Let's go ahead and take our two cell 300 milliamp 7.4 volt pack. Pull the 300 milliamp three cell pack out of it. All right, and then toss this little bugger in there. And then we'll sync up with the on screen display again. Show you guys how that performs. All right, check our CG. Fully level, right behind the window strut, I guess is what you get, the painted window strut. Perfect. We're gonna go ahead and take off from this little pavement over here. Be a little easier way to do it. All right, getting the flaps out. <laughs> it just gets right up. It's so goofy. All right. Whee! Two cells, not a problem. Man, is it, get, it is getting kicked around by turbulence right now. Look at it go. We're not gonna stay in the air too long on this two cell pack, but it does show you guys can do it. You can fly it on two cells, just like you did the old one. You do need a little adapter if the motor or if the battery that you're using doesn't have a JST connector on it. 
Horizon does sell those. It'll be in the description if you guys would like to use one. If you have the older style packs and you don't have the newer ones like I do with some of the packs, it's just a quick adapter is all you need. Let's drop the flaps, show you guys how slow it can come in. I actually like how it feels on the two cell pack. It is a little bit more responsive for sure. It also feels like a feather in the sky. I mean, look at it go. It's like, if it wasn't for the turbulence right now in the air, it would look rock solid. Whoa, baby. It's kind of hard to just putt around in circles uh, with the flaps out with this turbulence being what it is because it's it does run the risk of being dropped into the ground at any point, but it's handling it very well. This is what you call mechanical turbulence. It's coming from the trees surrounding this park and the wind is just causing all sorts of different eddies and, and whatnot in the air that we can't see, but the plane can feel because it has to fly through the fluid. So, you know, don't be afraid of it. The plane's gonna fly, it doesn't care. It, it literally cares not even a single bit about it. It's like why you shouldn't be afraid of it in, in an airliner either. If you feel turbulence, whatever, the planes, the, the wings are supposed to flap. That is what they're supposed to do. That is a, a suspension system for the plane. If it didn't flap, they would break. And if they somehow didn't break, it would be a very rough ride, much rougher than you think you're feeling. Let's bring it in for flaps, see if we can drop it. Plop. Hold full stick, get it to taxi over this grass without flipping over, and we'll take right out back off into it. There's full speed. On a two cell pack, it's a very respectable airframe. A lot of fun to fly. Bring it up and do a little hammerhead with it. It's fun. I do like my timbers. I really do. I like every single one of them. I had the original Turbo Timber Evolution UMX. I flew the crap out of that one. I had a couple of them. I even modded one of them into full span ailerons by getting rid of the flaps and taping it to the aileron servo. But I think that ended up overloading it and it jammed and that's why it crashed. But I had a lot of fun with it. Well, I did when I flew it. It was a lot easier to hover too because I could control the direction of the roll. I'm not gonna try to hover it on a two cell pack. It is not powerful enough to do that safely. I uh, just got the plane. This is like my third flight on it. I do not want to crash it. I wanna keep this thing going because you guys wanna see how it handles and we gotta take it to the lake and fly it there too. And after this flight, we're gonna put slats on it. You guys can see how it'll perform. Actually, you know what? We'll make the two cell flight really short because I don't think it needs to be on for too long. Quick barrel roll. We're gonna drop the two cell pack and we're gonna hop into slats and then we'll demonstrate the differences between the, the, uh, the model with those two on it. Plop. All right, oh let's go ahead and cut here and then we'll put the slats on it. You guys can see now that we did put the slats on the wing. I always bring a field kit with me so I can use foam safe glue. You're gonna wanna use like medium CA, a couple drops or not even, just like a drop on each little uh, slat connector piece. We'll get it in place. Did a quick flight off camera just to see how well it would fly. It was much more planted feeling in the sky. Gonna recommend that you guys do consider flying it with the slats if you want more stability. We're putting the 300 milliamp three cell pack back into it. We're gonna shove that even further back, as far back as we can get it in there. But hopefully it, without making it uh, come loose. I don't want it to come loose in flight because then the plane will go out of control and you know we won't be able to finish our little review of this bull bugger. Let's do it. Wind gust caught it. There we go. You can see the wind gust. I wasn't lying about that. Much more power on a three cell pack. You have nothing to worry about with one of these packs in this plane. I love the power and really honestly, there isn't that much difference for me to notice between three and two cells. In fact, I like how oh, like more aerobatic the plane is overall. 30 seconds. It is still nose heavy the way that I'm trying to make it do some snaps and tumbles, but it's still very stable, volts. easy to fly. Even in this wind, I mean, that UMX flight controller is doing some serious work to keep this plane stable in the sky. I'm gonna recommend you guys consider flying it on three cells. I think most people are gonna do that anyway, but if you guys are like hardcore stall enthusiasts, you're gonna to wanna to use the two cell pack and it'll reduce the wing loading as much as possible. When it comes to wing loading, I wanna clear up any of the misconceptions people might have. Putting the biggest battery you can get into something does not really help unless your ultimate objective is flight times. But there's a thing called diminishing returns where the more you add to something does not always guarantee the more you'll get out of it. So when you add a ton of weight to a plane, one of the things that's gonna happen is the increase in wing loading will require that you have to have more airspeed to take off, you have to have more airspeed to land. And on top of that, 
the airspeed at which the plane will stall, no matter what you do, increases as well. The more weight you put on it, the more, uh, the more airspeed, or rephrasing, the higher the airspeed at which it will stall. So that is a thing to be concerned with when you're adding a ton of weight. So a 300 pack, 280 milliamp pack, those are all good, solid choices to use on a plane like this. You can go higher, but you're gonna come at the cost of wing loading, which is gonna come at the cost of potentially flight time. It's gonna be easier to stall. Like you can actually, you can, you can basically harrier this thing around. Check it out. I can go full stick back and fly it like this, a little bit of wing loading, or not wing loading, uh, wing dipping that you can comp, you can basically use the rudder to compensate it. You can kind of see it if she's zoomed in at all, where I'm using the rudder constantly to keep it straight. So you can make this thing hairier if you put in some work for it. Like if we drop the flaps, it is actually a little bit easier. Look at that. So you can get some hairier performance out of this thing too, because it's a lighter weight three cell pack. If it was heavier, it'd be dropping a wing constantly right now. Let's not be too goofy with it. The wind is starting to kick up. Quick roll. A little bit of rudder to get it to roll a little faster. Uh, you can improve the roll rate significantly on the UMX Timber, Turbo Timber, Evolution, whatever you want to call it, uh, by, whoa, look at that wind. It's really, really catching it. Uh, you can Im increase the roll rate by adding rudder in the direction of the roll. So like, like, this, like this, check it out. There's the roll rate with the rudder. Without it, it's like maybe half of that. Still not bad, but like if you really get it to go, you can increase that roll rate significantly. Man, this is like a 20 mile an hour gust. What we need to do right now is turn the plane around. We're gonna go next to you, dear, and turn around. We're at like half throttle and it's hauling butt. We're gonna drop the flaps and we're gonna make it maybe even go backward in the sky. Negative ground speed, hopefully. All right, now it's kind of flying like a seagull. Look at, the, look at the way this thing handles the wind. It's super solid. I wonder if I can get like an elevator touchdown. Nah, it's not strong enough wind. With the Timber X, you have like the, the big Timber X, I actually did at one point do a, an elevator landing where it just came straight down from the high winds I was flying it in. Look at the way it handles the wind. Plop. <laughs> if you add a bit of back elevator to your roll with some rudder, you can get a, a snap that really kicks it around. Check this out. Right. Left. Really helps kick that plane around, get that nose up and through the turn. I'm glad it's a little bit windier um, because if it wasn't, you know, yeah, you'd see what the plane can do, but you wouldn't get an idea of what it's like to fly it in turbulence. And it's actually very stable for being a smaller plane. I mean, it still does all your knife edging, all of the crazy, crazy stuff you want to do with it. Inverted performance isn't all that great. We're going to go up higher a little bit and show you guys that. I'm not lying to you when I say I had to use full stick. Like this is full up. Actually, it's better. You know what? The last time we did it wasn't with the slats. I think the slats are grabbing the air and make it, making it perform better. It's full stick right now. Like 25% throttle. Look at it go. Actually, we're in almost a Harrier right now. I'm just steering with the rudder and a little bit of counter aileron. That's funny. So you know what? If you want better inverted performance right now, it seems to do better with the slats. That's funny. I actually, I heard the slats are supposed to reduce its performance, but before it wasn't actually going up with the slats off. So for sure, it's definitely improving the way it flies. I think we can go ahead and do the next two cell flight at the lake. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready to cut this short here in a little bit and fly it with the floats on it next. One of the biggest things I wanna call out too, having owned three or four of these little buggers, uh, various types from the UMX Timber X to the UMX Turbo Timber and now the Turbo Timber Evolution UMX. This is the quietest one by far. It is so quiet you can barely hear it. Like the other one has like, uh, like the original Turbo Timber and the UMX both have, or Timber X both have kind of like a droning waspy sound, kind of like a in the sky. This one sounds closer to the the bigger i don't want to say full scale counterpart but the bigger brother and sisters that that are uh in like the 1.5 meter range so it actually is super quiet and those ball linkages handle really well Battery 10 volts. do a little bit of stick smashing five minutes hopefully that all comes through on the camera it is a blue sky day of course like always when we want to film tell you what we're gonna go ahead and drop it in and we're gonna take it to the lake and see how that handles. It's got a nice crabbed approach. Plop, look at that. 
solid little bugger. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, while we're on camera, I didn't think the slats were going to improve the overall flight characteristics, but they totally did, which I think it did impact the roll rate a little bit. It definitely rolled faster without the slats, but right now I'm gonna say overall performance improved significantly with the slats installed. So I'm gonna say do it. I think you should put the slats on. I think they're gonna make the plane fly better in general. Um, there we go. It's gonna make it uh, much more stable feeling in the sky. You can get a higher angle of attack on the wings, bring it in almost like this if you really want it to. Uh, let's take it to the lake and then see what happens next time. All right, guys, we're back. We got the UMX Turbo Timber Evolution and we have the floats on it. We're gonna fly it here at the lake down the street from my house. There she goes. Look at her go. Cute little thing. No water rudder, it doesn't really need it. There it goes. The lake here is a little bit more protected from the winds than the park we were just at. So it's actually kind of nicer to fly here because the plane isn't being affected by turbulence as much. 20 seconds. Still very aerobatic with the floats. Still very easy to fly with the floats. I mean, look at how easy it comes in. We're gonna drop full flaps, kind of turn it around. This is a three cell 300 milliamp pack, spectrum pack, of course. Easy to fly, easy to land. It could have been a more perfect landing, but you know what? For the purpose of what we're doing, it's okay. You can see the wind was picking up one of the wings and dropping it. Not a big deal. It's kind of fun to have a float plane that you can take with you that doesn't take a whole lot of setup. You can just put it in your back seat, bring it with you wherever you want to go. Yes, it is another timber, but it's an awesome little timber. Let's see if it'll flat spin with the floats now. We're gonna go up nice and high, snap roll it. Yeah, it kind of did it for a second. You can't use contrary, <clears throat> contrary aileron, opposite aileron, because uh, it doesn't actually flatten out. It, the ailerons don't move up enough for that. The wind's really kicking up, of course. Why wouldn't it? Whenever I want to fly, it does that. Drop the flaps, get it to slow. Look at it go. It's almost, almost has zero ground speed. It's like walking right now. Goofy little thing, I love it. All right, use some rudder, turn it around. You can see it with the wind, even at like quarter throttle, it really hauls some butt. Trying to keep it out of the sun for her, cause like uh, it's hard enough to film me as it is. It doesn't help that the, the uh, wind is kind of pushing the plane in the wrong direction. I was hoping it would have come from the other direction, would have made it easier, but you know, can't always choose where you're gonna, what you're gonna have to deal with sometimes. So try to keep it in this little box right here. We live in a very beautiful neighborhood. I'm very fortunate to have as many places to fly as I do. Whether I'm flying at an airport, flying off the lake here, flying, I can even fly in my front yard. We're gonna take that to the house in a little bit and do it there too. Uh, let's use a little bit of slip it and bring it in. There we go. Drop it real quick. There we are. You can see the winds are definitely picking up. You can see the surface, the water is not glassy anymore, even though it was just as we, uh, we actually scouted the lake out on the way over just to make sure it was going to be okay to go to fly at later on. And man, it was <laughs> glassier than this. That's for sure. You can try a hover. I don't want to do it right above the surface of the water. With my luck, it would flop upside down. Probably would go to the other side of the lake and I'd have to go into a different neighborhood to get it back. There we go. Put it into a hover real quick. It actually hovers really well on this three cell pack when it's not being hit by turbulence nonstop. I'm gonna go. I am using a snap flap mix that's flaps mixed to uh, elevator, or elevator mixed to flaps rather. It's not the best hovering plane I've ever flown, but you know what? The fact that it can do it at all is pretty freaking cool. Snap flaps. You can hear that little motor working overtime. I'm gonna go. So if you like Hovering, you can do it with this plane. It might be easier to do this at my house uh, because the, uh, well, the wind shifted direction on us too, because the, uh, the, it'll be more protected from the wind, hopefully. But yeah, overall, uh, very easy to fly. Again, if this could be a beginner's plane, easily. If you wanna make it more aerobatic and less of a beginner's plane, you can put it on a three cell pack like what we're flying right now. But even on a three cell pack, it's very well behaved. I would say put the slats on. You won't be able to ring it out as much, but you'll be able to ring it out just fine. 
You don't even need the flaps to take off. You don't even have to do scale takeoffs. You can literally just throw it in the air. Roll rate is not really impacted too much by the slats, especially if you kind of add the rudder to it. With There we go. A little bit of elevator too. Look how fast it rolls with rudder. Use that tail to kick it around too, and it makes a big difference. Let's do a quick uh, slip, holding full rudder. A little bit of aileron to knock it around and full flaps. Look at how gentle that was. That was a really steep descent too. We came down from 100 feet and barely gained any airspeed when we did it. Let's do it again, show you guys how easy that is. Like, I'm not even joking. I was holding full aileron the entire, or not full, full rudder the entire time with full flaps. Dropping full flaps, we're gonna go up nice and high right here. Oh, there we go, did it a little too early. There we go, left, right rudder, pushing the nose down, leveling out, using some more rudder, and then plop. Not even a single bit of throttle used that entire time. That's how easy this thing is to fly, guys. Get it out of the sun, there we go. You able to keep up there? Yeah, but the side that you think is sunny is the good side. Really? Yeah. How good are you talking here? Like much better than what we're filming? Yeah, aside from, you know, the bush, because short people problems, but... All right, well, we'll work with that then. We'll stay over here for a few. The battery's not going to last much longer anyway, so we can uh, we can switch it over. Battery 11.2 volts. Yeah, we should probably bring it in pretty soon, but, you know, at this time of year in North Carolina, the trees are starting to come back, and it looks so good out here. I used to... I'm from Florida. I hated spring because it wasn't much... It was like summer with fewer steps, and, like... It would be in the 90s in February sometimes, even though February is winter. That gives you an idea of what our spring is like. My birthday's in March. In in uh, mid-March, it could be in the 90s sometimes. It just sucked. Flaps full. Let's drop the flaps. But here in NC, it's nice and cool outside. I actually have to wear a jacket this time of year. I, I love it here. And I love that I can do so much of my radio-controlled flying in this state. I think it would have been much harder in Florida. There would have been a lot more wind there. And the lake is already glassy again. Look at it go. Woo! It's so quiet. Again, I, I mentioned this at the park. I'm going to mention it here one more time. The motor in this thing doesn't have that characteristic, like, tinny whining sound that the older style did. This is definitely a much better sounding plane, for sure. Let's do some inverted performance. I'm kind of loath to do that in this narrow area that we got, but we're going to go ahead and flip it upside down. Oh, it's just fine. Half stick. Much better than the full stick I had to use earlier. I think the flaps make a big difference in how it performs. Let's go ahead and bring it in. It's a little bit of a, there we go, a little bit of a slip holding that rudder. Battery 11.2 volts. Look at that. Come on, baby, turn. There we go. Bring her in, we'll swap it out to a two cell pack if I can get it to actually turn. Herein lies the problem with not having a water rudder. And when you don't have a water rudder, you gotta do a bit more work to get it to turn around. You have to fight. Like, I'm literally full stick over. There we go. Now she's coming in. Oh, man. I might have to get in the water here. All right. Whoop. <laughs> You're good. Don't worry. I got it. I'm just going to... You know what? Uh, we're going to cut it real quick for the moment, and then she'll just film me trying to get it out. How about that? All right. So let's get her out with a stick. Nice and gentle. I don't want to damage the foam finish. I also don't want to fall in the water. Come here, baby. Come on. Get you out of there. Out of there. Didn't want, did not want to come out of there at all. Fishing for airplanes? Yeah, pretty much. There we go. Okay, now we can swap back. We've got the uh, Spectrum 2-cell 300 milliamp pack. If you got this little connector on yours, all you need is one of these little connectors. It'll be in the description if you want to use it. Plug that in there. Turns it into a JST connector, a little red connector. And then all we got to do, flop the plane over, plug in the correct end, which is this right here and then put the battery all the way in the back for the correct center of gravity. I prefer mine to be a little bit less nose heavy. Your mileage may vary, or rather your airspeed may vary. Come on. There it goes. No telemetry for this one on screen. We don't really need it for a two cell. Liz is gonna walk over there where she feels comfortable to film it. And then we're gonna get her taxied out of the water and then take off. There we go. It's a two cell pack, so we're not gonna have as much immediate power, but you can see the difference in the way the plane handles with full flaps out. Battery eight volts. There we go. She is definitely 
much more floaty. I mean, look at it go. It is like, I'm half stick to keep it in the air with the flaps right now. And it is just floating along happily. Like if you want to do stall or you want to do really slow flight, full flaps and two cells is the way to go. With a headwind too, you can really slow it down. Look how slow it, this is walking speed, literally walking speed. I can walk faster than this plane is flying. And I have walked faster than this plane is flying. One of my hobbies to keep myself in shape while I'm waiting for my electric bicycle, because these hills in, in NC are atrocious compared to Florida, is I walk my dog three miles and power walk with him. And I can walk faster than this plane's going right now to get three miles done in an hour. Look at that, with that wind, it's almost not flying. So you can't even hear the motor. That's how quiet it is. Of course, it doesn't help that the dudes are over there doing their lawn blowing stuff. And, uh, you know, that's just kind of the fact of life at this time of year, you're going to hear yard equipment. But overall, it's handling it just fine with the slats and everything else. I mean, I'm no flaps right now and it's still coming in real slow. You can kind of hear it. You can also see it being jostled by turbulence. Again, if you guys are afraid of flying in wind, don't be. There are wind limits, you know, for every airframe. This one, I would say maybe don't fly it in wind higher than 20 miles an hour. We're kind of getting into that territory right now, but on a two cell pack, it kind of floats along with, with it just happily. It doesn't seem to care too much. The plane does not care about turbulence. The only thing the plane cares about is airspeed. As long as it's got enough airspeed, it doesn't care where it's coming from. Look at it go. It's like, <laughs> you can see the, the wind direction changing in the sky as the plane get, gets kicked around by the turbulence. It's really cool to watch. If you want to study aerodynamics, these UMX models are a very good way to do that because you can actually see them in real time being affected by air currents and whatnot and how that affects the plane. Dropping the flaps again, bringing it in for a more slow flight. I mean, look at her go. I'm not even pulling the stick back. It's doing that on its own. The slats are helping it out. Really bites into the air and keeps it planted there. Full stick back right now, look at it go. There, it finally stalled. That kind of made my heart jump for a second. Uh, I forgot that this plane does have a very gentle stall characteristic. As you see, full stick back, even at half throttle, only thing it produced was a nose down. And it wasn't even that hard to overcome. I just gave it some more throttle. And once it started flying again, it was no problem at all. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go, uh, do a quick touch and go if we can without dropping the plane upside down. Actually, nope. The wind shifted on us. There we go, throttle out of that. Again, don't be afraid of the wind. The plane is still going to fly. If anything, it flies better with more airspeed and wind does actually get factored into airspeed. Uh, same logic behind why you should ride a bicycle with traffic, not against it. If you get hit by a car coming at you, you have to add your speed to the incoming car speed. So you're, you're biking at 15 miles an hour and you get hit by somebody going 30. You just had a 45 mile an hour impact. You might die. However, if you get hit from behind, you have to subtract that speed. So you get hit at like 15 miles an hour, which is a little bit easier on your body. So keep that, and also you probably run on the hood too. But anyway, to the point of the plane, now that the winds have died down ever so slightly, we can try to make a quick approach and drop it in. There we go, turn into the wind, that'll help. Plop. Let's do a stall takeoff, full throttle. So you don't even need three cells to do that. It'll literally lift right up. The wind helps, of course, but you don't need it. A little bit of adverse yaw when it rolls, no biggie. I will say my personal preference is three cells. I don't care as much for two cells, but it is pretty cool to see how slow it can go without stalling. Let's do a flat turn, get it into the wind. And let's wrap her up and bring her in. And then we'll go back to the house and we'll do some flying in front of the house, show you guys how versatile it can be. But. When you're flying with this wind, you need to keep those wings as level as possible. If it tips, there's a potential it can flip over itself. I think I can get it back without having to use the stick this time or falling into the water. Perfect. All right, guys, we're back in front of my house. Uh, my neighbors are probably gonna think I'm a little weird, but they know I run a YouTube channel, so, you know, whatever. Uh, we're gonna do some stuff here in the front yard with the last three cell 300 milliamp spectrum pack that we've got. We're gonna do some approaches over the top of the house, slipping it in. We're going to do you know, some slow flap circle flying, maybe a little bit of hovering if I feel adventurous enough. Really don't wanna break it, but so far you guys have seen when it does hover, it hovers pretty well. What I'm mostly concerned about with hovering this plane is going to be the wind gusts that seem to pick up at random. It's a pretty calm day until it's not. Taxi it on up with me. Hey, 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 watch where you're going. 
All right, here we go. Keep it nice and slow. This is a three cell pack again. So you see we have a very confined area to work with here with a vehicle parked here, not even remotely a problem. Probably came a little close to that tree above Liz. Not a problem at all though. This plane is very, very capable of flying here. I have flown it here many times. This is actually where I do most of my flying. And you can see why, look at this. Scrape, no biggie at all. So let's show you guys what, a, uh, what an approach looks like over the trees. Get her into takeoff. Right above the house. I've flown my big one and a half meter timber here too. What we're gonna do is go up, all the way flaps, hold the rudder to slip it in, and then bring it back in. Nice style bush flying. Handles no problem. We'll do that a couple more times. Maybe do a little B-roll with the two cell, which is even easier to do it with. Now let's do some knife edge. Not even a problem at all. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Dropping the flaps. You can really fly this in confined areas. If you spend the time to do it correctly too, you can actually make it work right. We're gonna hover it real quick too. I feel confident enough the wind is low enough. We'll go ahead and give it a shot. Little, little bit of work. Some of that's turbulence, some of that's me over controlling but you can hover it in the confined area, not even a problem. Flip the plane over and around. Hold full right rudder as we bring it in, We're pushing the nose down, let it glide in. We'll actually turn it around over here. So how easily you can fly it in this confined area. This is really a testament to how well Horizon designed this plane, that you can fly it in so many different areas. You can fly it in big fields, you can fly it in big confined spot, or not big, small confined areas like my front yard. We can go underneath that tree, Go over my house, almost hit it, over my tree there, and then plop it down right at my feet and go right back up. It's really a jack of all trades. Slip it back in, straighten out, there you go. Nobody's gonna grease every single landing, you know? Still got plenty of power, let's do a little bit more hovering if we can. Keeping in focus, dear? Yeah, you mind if I come over that way? Go for it. You can keep up with it while we do this. Maybe. Hovering just fine. Look at that. Easy, easy peasy. Let's drop it in. A little bit of right rudder. Perfecto. Do a right hand turn this time around. I hear some people complain that YouTubers can't do anything but turn left. Trust me guys, if you can turn left, you can turn right. It ain't that hard to do. I'm getting right next to my face. Again, it's not hard. I'm gonna actually, I might even be able to hover it and pick it up out of the sky too. I wish I had a little bit more elevator authority. Uh, I think I'd get more of that with the two cell pack. Bring it in. Let's see if I can actually pick it up out of the sky. And then we'll give you guys a, I'll let it roll down the hill. I live on a very steep hill. Let's see if I can get her to hover and if I can grab it, that'll be cool. If not, we'll bug her out of it. Being careful here. This is a plane Horizon sent me. I don't want to break it already. We'll do it later. But just show you guys like, again, how well it can do these approaches. Plop. Probably the best landing yet. So you're gonna stand here, I'll move down. How about that? There we go. One wheel takeoff. It is so quiet compared to the other timbers that I've flown here. They're all super loud compared to this. Let's fly it without slipping it. So this is normally how I fly even my big ones, but I, I tend to slip those, but this one doesn't even really need to be slipped. Look at that. A little scrapey. Now let's see if I can get it to actually hover this time. I'm hovering in a cul-de-sac that's like 40 feet wide, by the way, guys. Maybe 50. 
and you can power right out of the hover too. It is stupidly cool. This is the most capable timber UMX that I've ever flown. And then before you guys chime in or somebody chimes in and says, you know, because Horizon sent this to me, I'm saying that, I'm saying it because it's really this good. I mean, I think the testament is the fact that I'm willing to do all this cool stuff with it. And I think it's really awesome because I can do this stuff with it. Let's try to get that hover grab. <laughs> See what I mean? Whoop. It is just that much fun to fly. Okay. How much power we got? Enough to do one more quick hover. This will be where it, it crashes, right? Yeah, we're gonna get out of that because I can already tell that I have to fight it too much. Do one more quick approach, flip her around, then we'll shoot the B-roll with the two cell footage. There you go. Not every landing is going to be perfect, but that's okay. I want to give you guys my unbridled opinion on this plane with the dogs barking in the background, of course. Get in the sun so you guys can see me a little bit better. This is stupidly cool. This is the best version of the UMX Turbo Timber I have ever seen. The uh, control links are what sets it apart for me. These are actual ball links. You can take them off with a one and a half millimeter screwdriver. Really easy. You can adjust them as needed. The, they're still using linear servos, but that's kind of the trade-off you're gonna get for a UMX plane. You need that uh, to keep it lightweight to the point where it can still fly and not constantly be sluggish and crappy. The um, rudder and elevator authority is good for almost everything except for hovering. It could use a little bit more authority there, I think. I can probably adjust the linkages to make that. This is all stock linkages. I'm flying everything stock. There's nothing modified here. Uh, except for like, you know, when you saw me put the slats on, but it comes with the plane. I didn't have to change anything out. The um, battery compartment is nice and spacious. Plenty of space to work with 300s. You could go a little heavier if you wa really want it to. I wouldn't recommend it. You get plenty of flight time on these packs. Two and three cell 300s are perfectly fine. If you have the old 280s, you can use the adapter. Link is in the description for that. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I have heard that these are probably going to sell out really quick. These are probably one of the best selling models from Horizon. If you want to get one of these, get it from in a pre-order, get it now. They don't charge you until it ships. Uh, use the link in the description. It helps us out a ton. It tells Horizon also that you guys are buying from us so that they know to continue to support us because we love working with them. And I think it sounds like they like working with us too. Uh, my, the, the two brothers score on this right now, this is a solid nine and a half. They've done so many improvements, so, nine and a half out of 10. So many improvements from making the gear a little bit more robust with screws that are actually like uh, washer screws to uh, a much more upgraded motor. This is a three cell capable motor to the ability to have like, what is it? Um, the, what the heck are these things? I just said it again, ball linkages. There we are, ball, ball linkages in the plane. Uh, the lighting is still just as good as it always was. Overall, this thing is phenomenal. It looks incredible. I love the blue. I'm glad they brought it back as a throwback to the original Turbo Timber Evolution. That was one of my favorite trim schemes. Um, just, it flies so good on two or three cells. It's it, If I gave it anything less than a nine and a half, I feel like I'd be lying to you guys. Hope you like it. Pick it up from the description if you want to support us. And we'll see you guys again in the B-roll section coming right up. We don't need to focus on the takeoffs or the landings much for the flight characteristics. You guys saw plenty of that already. It's perfectly capable in either regard. Horizon did a fantastic job upgrading this one without sacrificing its overall incredible flight characteristics. That's a car. <laughs> run, little plane, run. We decided that it would be a great test of the airframe's potential to put a two-cell pack into it and start bush flying it out front. The cul-de-sac is actually 80 feet wide, so it's a bit bigger than the 40 we guessed at earlier on camera. It's not forgiving of mistakes though, there's trees everywhere and you need to be really confident in your stick and rudder skills to fly here. The UMX Turbo Timber Evolution just feels planted in the sky with the slats installed and the UMX flight controller governing it. The model doesn't fight you, it basically always goes where you tell it to go. Seeking to make it more difficult for ourselves, we started performing these forward slips over the house as an ideal test. If it can fly here, it can fly almost anywhere. Why not throw in a one-wheel takeoff too? It'll do it no problem. The key to these kinds of approaches is to not let your anxiety response get the best of you. Nobody is perfect and we all make mistakes. The timber handles rough landings well, just don't slam it into the ground at full speed. Treat it well and it'll always come back home. The timber's big wings make it excel at knife edge takeoff. 
Don't be afraid to add in rudder while you're rolling the plane after rotating for that extra bit of flying pizzazz. Those big wings make this model lightly loaded on a two-cell pack. This means that you can kick the nose around easily with rudder and turn on a dime without stalling. Take advantage of this and make anywhere your preferred flying field for the timber. You don't have to just fly from big grass fields. We hope you enjoyed this demo of the upcoming UMX Turbo Timber Evolution. Be sure to pre-order while you still can, it's gonna sell out fast. See you next time for a new upload.